Okay. Lesson 3.3, picking up on example 6, implicit differentiation. When there's x's and y's within the problem, we're not solving this for y. Not easily. It would be horribly ugly. So implicit differentiation, right? So what is the derivative of natural log of something? One over the something, yes? So in this case, 1 over xy times the derivative of that something, yes? And how do, we, how do we do the derivative of xy? That's going to be a product rule. So I'm going to say derivative of x is 1, keep the y, and since that was derivative of the x term, we usually just leave it, unless you want to say dx dx, right? Product rule says plus. Now I'm going to keep the x. Derivative of y is 1. And then times dy dx. So that's the derivative of natural log of xy equals derivative of sine of x. Derivative of sine of something is cosine of something. I said of something just to get that habit. What's the derivative of x? 1, right? So this is where chain rule doesn't really matter, right? This is why we didn't learn chain rule at first. So if there's just an x, you just leave it as is. Okay. Our job is to solve for dy dx. What's that mean we're going to have to do on the left? Distribute. Because we have a dy dx on one term and not both terms, well, I guess one way is to distribute, and that's probably going to be the easier way. So 1 over xy times y. What is that? The y's can cancel, and it's 1 over x. Plus x over x times 1 over xy, dy dx. So what cancels there? And x cancels. You've got 1 over y dy dx. Still equal to cosine x. Now I would get the dy dx term by myself, by itself. So I'm going to keep 1 over y dy dx where it is. I'm going to subtract the 1 over x to the other side. So cosine x minus 1 over x. Yeah. If it's 1 divided by y, I mean, we could say multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is y over 1, correct? So we're going to multiply by y. Because really, it's just that we need to get rid of. And so when I multiply by y, I'm going to have dy dx equaling to, I'm going to put the y out front, and then in parentheses, just cosine x minus 1 over x. And if I'm guessing, that's how I left it. That is how I get left it. Yeah. Okay. So this is probably one. Are you guys okay with how I started that problem? Is that how you would have started it? Obviously it's how I would have started it because I took the lead there and started it that way. As a side note here. Okay. I had us do the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over something times the derivative of that inside, right? Another option, just a thought. Natural log of x times y could also be written as natural log of x plus natural log of y. And so you could have, if you wanted to, my brain didn't think like this, Okay, and as I look at it, I have it written as a side note. So I have a feeling if you look at the guided notes answer key, 
on Schoology, you're going to see this option is my guess. Okay. I went with what came natural to me. But you could have done this, yes? Because the natural log of, what's the derivative of natural log of x? 1 over x. Derivative of natural log of y? 1 over y times dy dx. Natural, or derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And you'll notice that that is what we have right there, isn't it? So in all honesty, that actually kind of flows a little easier, but it's a matter of what your brain sees when you look at the problem. Okay. Questions there? Okay. Well, let's get back to these tangent lines. We just can't get away from them, can we? So example seven is what is called a rotated ellipse. If you remember last year, back in January, we did ellipses, which were basically the ovals, right? Um, this is a rotated ellipse, so it's still an oval. Find the equation of the tangent line at x equals negative 1, comma, 2. Well, we have our x value, yes. If we need the equation of the tangent line, then we need the slope, which means we need the derivative, yes. And again, this is set up for implicit differentiation. So, here we go. Derivative of x squared is 2x minus derivative of xy. You can do this one of two ways. You can do your product rule and put it in parentheses or realize that we're subtracting both pieces. Does that make sense? And I think I might actually, if I put it in parentheses, okay, the derivative of x, keep the y. So derivative of x is 1, keep the y, it's just y. And then since I put it in parentheses, I can go ahead and say plus. Now I'm going to keep the x. The derivative of y is 1 times dy dx. Plus derivative of y squared. Two y dy dx derivative of seven zero. Now, if you didn't put parentheses here, what's the difference? You went ahead and distributed the minus, so you have minus x dy d, dy dx, right? Okay. So let's see. We want to keep our dy dx terms. Move everybody to the other side. I'm going to write this out. You don't have to. It's 2x minus y minus x dy dx and then plus 2y dy dx. Sorry. My brain wasn't happening. We need to move the 2x and the y. Keep the dy dx terms. Can I go ahead and factor out dy dx? Or no? If I keep negative x dy dx there, and I'm going to keep 2y dy dx there, I'm going to subtract 2x to the other side, and I'm going to add y to the other side. Which, in all honesty, if I look in the notes, it's probably going to say y minus 2x, just to put the positive first. So, well... Who knows what my notes do, but that's what the answer key notes are probably going to say. Okay, so if you haven't already, factor out the dy dx. It's negative, not equals, parentheses. There's a negative x plus 2y, and it equals negative 2x plus y. Solve by dividing, and dy dx is negative 2x plus y over negative x plus 2y. What do we need? We need to know what dy dx is 
Want to evaluate at negative 1, 2, right? Plug them in if you haven't already. I got 2 plus 2 on top is 4, 1 plus 4 on bottom is 5, so I got a slope of 4 fifths. So we have a slope of 4 fifths. We're given a point of negative 1, 2, and we just need to write the equation, right? Y equals 4 fifths times X minus negative 1 plus 2. So y equals 4 fifths times x plus 1 plus 2. B, equation of the normal line. Do you remember that vocabulary? What's the normal line? Okay, opposite reciprocal, perpendicular, right? Those are the pieces you need to know. A line and its perpendicular line, their slopes multiply to equal negative 1, which is just the opposite reciprocals. So if my slope up above was 4 fifths, what is the perpendicular slope, or in other words, the normal slope? That is going to be negative 5 fourths. So if they want the equation of the normal line at the same point, Basically, just change your slope out. So y equals negative 5 fourths times x minus negative 1 plus 2. Okay, one last page. Two examples with lots of room. Calculating higher order derivatives. So this is when you're doing implicit differentiation, how do we do second derivatives, third derivatives, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, basically, we're still going to find our first derivative the same way. You're still going to want to solve for dy dx. And then once you have dy dx equals, then we can use information to find the second derivative. Now, with second derivatives, though, and higher up derivatives, you're going to have more dy dx's in there. And so we're going to have to do some substitution, subbing what we already found out into that answer to give a final answer. And that may not make sense right now, but once we go through, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay? So we want the second derivative given the original function cosine y equals x. So before I can find the second derivative, I need to find the first derivative. Well, what's the derivative of cosine of something, or cosine of y in this case? The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to say negative sine of y times dy dx. So this derivative of y then, which is just 1 dy dx, equals, what's the derivative of x? 1. Okay, I'm curious to see what direction you guys go here. Because I went different direction. When you solve for dy dx, what are you guys going to say this is? Well, we'll start with to be 1 divided by negative sine y, yes? So negative of 1 over sine y. Now, what form do we put this in? And this is where there are options. Okay. Huh? What'd you say? Wait, what? 
Never. Did you say quotient? Yeah. Okay. So you're looking at to do the second derivative, you're going to leave it in this form and do the quotient rule. No, I'd rather do the x. Okay. So one option is to say, and again, I don't know what's, you know, one option is as we look ahead, you can th say this is the negative of sine y raised to the negative first. I'll be honest, that's not where I went with this, but that's where the notes went with this. Okay. I looked at the fact sine is in the denominator. What's the reciprocal of sine? Cosecant. So I'm going to say, or I looked at it as dy dx is negative cosecant y. Now I'm trying to look ahead and see. And this is where I don't think there's a right versus a wrong way to go here. So pick one of these to do your second derivative with. That one. That is so helpful. Yes. Yes. Okay. Even more helpful here. I don't know. Which one do we want to work with here? I'm okay. I'm trying to look and see. And I will say the answers are going to look different because of it. We could actually take. We could actually try both of them if you want. Let's do it. And I can show you the differences. Let's, let's do both. Yeah. I know we have time, but that time work on homework. Yeah. Okay. So. If we go, if we go with the negative cosecant, which is where my brain went, and again, I'm not saying right or wrong here, okay? So if I go with my first derivative, negative cosecant y, then second derivative. What is the second derivative of, or what is the derivative of negative cosecant y? Now, this is a challenge. Do we remember the derivative of yeah. cosecant? It's cos negative cosecant. Yeah, this is where my brain says the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So the derivative of cosecant is cosecant cotangent, but with a negative. But we already have a negative, so this is going to become positive cosecant y cotangent y. The derivative of the inside, well, derivative of y is just 1, but then dy dx. Okay, that's the direction my brain went with this. Now, here's the deal. We can't really do a whole lot of cleanup here. However, you don't get to leave a dy dx in your answer. What is dy dx? What did we find dy dx to be? Negative cosecant y. So that's the part about we'll use some substitution here. You don't say the second derivative is cosecant cotangent times the first derivative. You go ahead and sub those values in. So d squared y over dx squared is going to be cosecant y cotangent y times, and I'm going to say negative cosecant y. If I clean this up a little bit, d squared y over dx squared is going to be negative cosecant squared y cotangent y. And that's how I left my answer. As I said, my answer doesn't agree with the notes. But what we have here, this is an equivalent form. Okay? And it comes down to, you know, the AP, the multiple choice. You just have to look for equivalencies. Um, if we look at the other option, 
Okay. If instead we use the idea that dy dx is, what do we say? Negative sine y to the negative first. Okay? Travel along with me here. I'm not sure if I'm leaving myself enough room here, but. So now we're using our power rule instead, yes? Now the advantage is we only have to know the derivative of sine. We don't have to know the derivative of cosecant here. Pros, cons. The derivative of something raised to the negative 1. Multiply by the negative 1 out front, and that's going to become positive 1. Keeping the sine y, and negative 1, subtract 1, becomes to the power of negative 2, times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of sine y? Cosine y times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. <clears throat> now, okay, d squared y over dx squared. I can clean up what I already have here, and that sine to the negative 2, where does that go? That goes to the denominator, right? So I already have cosine y over sine squared y, if you will, times what is dy dx? I wouldn't use the negative cosecant y, though. I would use what we used, where just, you know, based on which form we were using. Does that make sense? So based on the fact that we used negative 1, negative 1 over sine y. I mean, we had written it as sine y to the negative first, but it's also negative 1 over sine y. So it's doing that same substitution. Clean this up. I have cosine, excuse me, negative of cosine y over sine cubed y. Now, this is where we didn't get to see this part, but this is an interesting connection. Okay? When we got done here, we were kind of done with ours. Now, if we take this right here and manipulate a little bit, guess what? These are going to be equivalent, yes? If we, you know, do all the right manipulations with trig functions, they are equivalent. However, there is one thing we can look at here. Notice I have what on here on top? I have a cosine y, yes? If we go back to our original function, what was our original function? Cosine y is equal to x. So another way to express this would be to say d squared y over dx squared is some negative cosine y, negative x over sine cubed y. And that's the option you see in the notes. Now, technically, could we take the option we did previously in blue there, excuse me, manipulate it and have that extra cosine that can change to x? Yes. I think it's more obvious in this method than it is this method. Okay. So, I, you know, this is an either or. I get both. I see both. You know, if something comes up like this on a test where the answers could look different depending on which way you go, I get it. Okay. I would be willing to accept both, that type of thing. But these are equivalent answers which is good for free response. For multiple choice, that would be a challenge to maybe see the equivalence there. Although I don't feel like I've seen as much substitution as that. Obviously, yes, you have to substitute the dy dx back in. But. Okay, questions there? 
Okay, shall we try number nine? <clears throat> So number nine, find the points at which this given graph, which is another rotated ellipse, has either a horizontal or vertical tangent line. Okay, so it says points, indicating it's going to be multiple, horizontal or vertical tangent line. Thoughts on where horizontal and vertical tangent lines are going to be here, just generally speaking? What? Okay, except we don't really have max and min here. I mean, I guess we do in a way. So, is there going to be a horizontal tangent line up there somewhere? And down there somewhere? I don't think of those as max and mins, but I guess you could. Okay, and where are my vertical tangent lines going to be then? The sides of the big square that Jacob's wanting to draw around it, yes? Okay. So these are the pieces we're looking for, is those tangent lines. Now, in all honesty, can you kind of in this particular graph look at it and guess those points? You can. But mathematically, we need to talk about how we figure this out. So... If we're talking about horizontal and vertical tangent lines, we need to talk about slope, which means we need to talk about first derivative, yes? So let's get that out of the way. Derivative of x squared is 2x plus derivative of xy. Oh my goodness, do we have this memorized yet? Derivative of x is 1, keep the y, plus... Keep the x, derivative of y is going to be 1 dy dx, plus derivative of y squared, 2y dy dx, derivative of 27, 0. Okay? You know what to do here, yes? I'm going to keep my dy dx, so x dy dx plus 2y dy dx. I'm going to subtract over the 2x and the y, so negative 2x minus y. I'm going to factor out dy dx. When I factor out dy dx, I have x plus 2y in those parentheses. Still negative 2x minus y. And I'm going to solve for dy dx by dividing, right? So dy dx is going to be negative 2x minus y divided by x plus 2y. Okay. Let's talk horizontals first. When do horizontal tangent lines occur? Okay. So horizontals occur when dy dx is zero. Now, specifically, our dy dx is a fraction, yes? So what part of that do I need to make zero? If a fraction is zero, right, if a fraction is zero, it is zero divided by some number, right? So we care about the fact that when does negative 2x minus y equal zero, right? Because we want to know when does this fraction equal zero, but the only part that's really going to matter is the numerator. When does your numerator equal zero? Because we're talking horizontal tangent line. Um, if I add the y over, can we be agreed that this happens when y equals negative 2x? 
Okay. So we have this y equals negative 2x part. Go back to your original equation and substitute that value in. So my original equation is x squared plus x times y. What am I putting in for y? Negative 2x plus y squared. Again, what am I putting in for y? So it's negative 2x quantity squared. And that equals 27. It looks bad right now, but it's not. So I took all my y's, I replaced them with negative 2x. So then I have x squared, x times negative 2x, it's minus 2x squared, plus negative 2x quantity squared is going to be 4x squared. The equation still equals 27. 1 minus 2 plus 4. 3x squared equals 27. If 3x squared equals 27, then x squared is 9. I divided by 3. If x squared is 9, what is x? Nice. Two long years of me pounding that into our head, and we can remember the plus or minus sometimes now? Maybe? Okay. Okay. Plus or minus 3. So what's going to happen here? We're going to have horizontal tangent points when x is 3. So right here, x is 3. Oh, hey, what's that look like? Right there, yes. And when x is negative 3, where's that going to be at? Right there. So what was it? Find the points where there's a horizontal or vertical tangent line. So I'm going to do my vertical work here in the middle, but... Horizontal... I'm going to say TL for tangent lines, are going to happen at, now, officially, we could take 3 and plug it back into the equation, couldn't we? Take 3, plug it back into that original equation. What do you notice, though? Can we tell what that is? We can tell what that is. There's going to be a horizontal tangent line at the point 3, negative 6, and... Negative 3, again, officially we can take the negative 3 and plug it back in. But this one, you can tell it's at negative 3, positive 6. Okay. Now your brains have to think vertical. When do vertical tangent lines occur? My derivative what? Does not exist. In algebra, as we always talked about, a vertical line having an undefined slope, yes? Okay. Undefined does not exist. So we always talk undefined slope when that first derivative does not exist. As a fraction, what does that look like? When the denominator is zero, right? When it was zero, it was always zero over some number. When it's denom when it does not exist, undefined, zero is in the denominator. So this time I'm going to take my denominator and set it equal to zero. X plus two y equals zero. I can solve this. And x equals negative 2y. And we can do similar math to what we did last time, right? So I'm going to take my equation. Every place I see x, I'm putting in negative 2y. So x squared is going to become negative 2y quantity squared. 
plus x, which is going to be negative 2y, times y, plus y squared, still equals 27. Luke, could you make it be uh, y equals negative x over 2? Would that work? I don't like it, but yes, you could. Okay? And why don't I like it? Fractions, right? So, yeah, I totally agree. You could go the other way and say y equals negative one-half x. You just have to work with a fraction. I guess, you know what? Oh, huh. guess what? In my notes, I did do y equals negative one-half x. So, okay, wait a minute. Do I like this? Now that I think about that, hmm. So what, what's going to happen here? We're going to get the y values. Is it okay that I lead you this way, or should we be messing with the fractions? And here's what I'm going to say. In theory, does it work both ways? It does. Okay. In theory, it's going to work both ways. I happened to glance at my notes after Ethan said that and realized, oh, guess what? I do have y equals negative one-half x. I feel like the way this equation is, though, you could sub either in and it would work out the same, right? However, if I'm going to be legitimate, I should probably have a solving for x's. But you, as I said, you could go the other way and we'll end up in meeting in the end in a roundabout way. Yes? I just thought it was easier because it, it's the same thing, just a different variable as last time we solved. Yeah. You can see if we keep working this out, why am I not erasing? Oh my gosh. There's a fly on the whiteboard. It's crawling. It's crawling. Hey. Where? At the graph. At the Did graph. You <laughs> there you go. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm like, why am I not able to erase? <laughs> I watched him land too. And there's your proof when I have screwy things on my whiteboard. When I come in first thing in the morning. <sighs> okay. You get out of there. So, yeah, he was drawing all that time that I was trying to erase because I'm trying to back up. There we go. Now his line's gone. <sighs> that is funny. Like, why am I not able to erase? Okay. Now, yeah, because of the similarities, you were noticing those y values were going to come out to be plus or minus 3, weren't they? Okay. Now, I am going to take us the other way just because. So x squared, okay, so if I solve this for y instead, y is going to be divided by negative 2. I, my brain wrote negative 1 half x. If you'd rather write negative x over 2, that will work as well. And if you'd rather keep going the other way that I started you on and meet me in the end, go for it. Okay? So... x squared is x squared plus x times y, which is going to be negative one-half x, plus y squared equals 27. If I fill those values in, okay, let's clean it up. x squared is x squared. x times negative one-half x. One-half x squared plus negative one half x times negative one half x one fourth x squared and good news is the fractions aren't bad here to work with so I'm adding one negative a half and one fourth one minus a half is a half a half plus a fourth is three fourths x squared equals 27 if I multiply by four thirds, multiply by four, divide by three, well, a three and 27 can cancel, so it's four times nine, which is 36. And if x squared equals 36, then x is plus or minus six. 
Okay? And so, vertical tangent lines happen at what points? Well, it's going to be 6 something and negative 6 something. Officially, we've already talked about what those values are, but you still have to get them paired up right. Um, so if we look over here at 6, it looks like there's going to be a 6, negative 3. And if I look over here at negative 6, it's going to be negative 6, positive 3. And again, I can't guarantee it would always work. In this case, had we gone for y instead, it would work just fine. Okay. And also, you can always sub a value back in if you don't have a graph. You can sub the values back into the original equation and do things like that. Okay? Okay, guys. You have some work time. Not as much as you probably should have had because my brain wasn't exactly where it needed to be at certain points, but we made it.